Hi there. Are you looking for the best grounding strategy for your two layer boards? In the previous two videos in this series, I showed you that you need a four layer board to achieve maximum results. In this video, I'm going to use my 30 years of experience to show you what the limiting factor is in the two layer design and how to get around it. I'll prove this with measurements on these two dedicated test boards. I will be using circuits and theories that I explained in the previous two videos. So if you fully want to understand this video, you should watch these first. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is see if we can get some improvement by using the ground plane on the top as well. Now we'll first have a look at it on the four layer board since that's our perfect reference. This is the layout of the filter we'll be measuring. So you can see the, the board design here and the actual assembled board. And what you notice is that on these four spots, actually five spots, we can either connect or disconnect the top ground plane. You can see it here on the layout, how you can do that. And um, let's see what this does. So what you can immediately see, it has no impact on a four layer. Yeah, you see some slight differences, but it's just noise. So on a four layer, you can connect the top, no problem, nothing will happen. Next, we'll have a look what the effect is on our two layer design. Now our two layer design had some limitations compared to the four layer design. It was quite a lot worse. So let's see if it helps to connect the top layer. So the layouts here look exactly the same and actually they are. The only difference here is that in this two layer design, the ground plane is 1.6 millimeters below the top layer, where in the four layer design, it was just 0.19 millimeters below the top layer. So that's a huge difference. So you can see the exact same strategy that we had on the other layout. We have five locations where we can connect the top ground layer. So these are the results. The blue line is basically the four layer board, our, our reference. And the purple line or pink, whatever it is, <laughs> is when it's connected. And the yellow line is when it's not connected to the top ground. And what you can see, it's, it's actually getting quite a lot better, except for here, there's some crazy resonance. But uh, overall, it does help to connect the top ground, but we're not there yet. We mentioned before that the vias on a two layer board are terrible. 500 pico hauris versus the 12 pico hauris on the four layer uh, stack up that we're using. So what would happen if we were to improve these vias? Well, I did that. I had to drill a few extra holes. So you can just see it here in the picture, two extra holes near any, every via. And the original via is still there. So basically we have triple vias now. Those two added vias also use quite a thick wire. That basically means it's a larger via. And the larger the via, the lower the inductance will be. So this is a big improvement. So let's assume they're all three 500 pico haris. When we have three in parallel, we should get something like 150. But since those vias are also bigger, we'll probably be below 100. I also wanted to be able to disconnect the top layer. Well, that requires some destructive measures because um, with these extra holes, they were basically in the top ground plane. So I had to use my Dremel to cut away the top ground around these things to be able to do this measurement. So I won't be able to uh, hook this back up to the top layer again. Let's see what it does. What you can see, it helps. Let me switch a few times between the original vias and the multiple vias. So these are the original single vias and the multi -v multiple vias again single vias, multiple vias. So you can see there is a very clear improvement. Multiple vias or better vias definitely help. Um, connecting or not connecting ground plane depends a little bit on the frequency. And we're still not achieving uh, the same results as the four layer board. So I'd just like to dive a little deeper in why connecting the ground plane gives some inconclusive results. So here we have the layout. The signal comes in here and over here, it has to leave 100 dBs damped. Now, of course, there's a direct capacitance from here to here. And there are all these current loops here. Here you have a current loop into the board here, 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 and here, all to ground. And these are all transmitting. Now, if you're not achieving the maximum suppression yet, then changing the ground connections anywhere in this whole area will change the whole balance and impedance at different frequencies. And at one frequency, this can be favorable. At another, it can be less favorable. We also saw a resonance. So apparently when you do that, somewhere a resonance occurs, whether you connect it or not. Because our suppression is not enough, 
anything you change in the environment will actually change the response and the suppression. So before we continue, I have a gift for you if you're interested. I call it the Electronic Product Development Checklist, and it basically covers schematic entry, component selection, component placement, and layout. So everything you need for developing a board. It contains my 30 years of experience, and you can get it for free by leaving a comment, send me the checklist. I'm explicitly saying it's free because I'm, someone was asking me for one of the previous movies, hey, how much is your book? Well, it's free, so let's go on. So I have two more test circuits on my four layer test board. And uh, in these test circuits, I can demonstrate the difference with, between the crosstalk on a two layer and a four layer layout. Now here you can see the measurement setup. It's my nano VNA connected to one of these structures. And if you look at it in detail, it looks like this. Now I have to explain this a little bit further. So here we see the, the layout coming from my PCB design package. So here you can connect a uh, coaxial cable and you can solder it on here. The current will move along this wire here, connect to the ground plane and go back. So basically it is a shorted 50 ohm source. The coaxial cable will provide a 50 ohm source impedance, current runs through a loop. On the other side, we have an exactly similar loop connected to the other coaxial cable, as you can see here. So we're basically looking at the loss from this loop to that loop. If you look at the picture here on the left bottom, uh, you see this connection loop here. And this will actually transmit quite a lot of signal. And I do not want the direct transfer of this loop to that loop. So I have the option to place a shield here. You can't see it, it's out of focus, but there's a vertical shield here. Uh, here you can maybe see it a little bit better, like this. And what this does is, is this blocks all the crosstalk above the board. And that way we can really pinpoint what is happening inside the board. Now, of course, I can remove the shield as well. And I've also measured that. So let's have a look at these results. So the top two characteristics are the characteristics with the two layer board. And you see that the loss is relatively low, something like 25 decibels. And what is interesting to see is that the shield doesn't have that much impact. It helps a little but not much. And actually at higher frequencies, it, it seems to not even help at all. It seems to be worse. Now the bottom two lines are the four layer. And here you do see a big impact of the shield. It really helps around well, eight dBs. And you also see that in the four layer, the crosstalk is much less. We're looking at 15 dBs less um, without a shield. And with the shield, it's, yeah, it's approaching 20 decibels, somewhere in that order. This is very interesting to investigate. So in order to investigate what's going on, I've made these cross sections. Now, the top two drawings, these two represent the four layer solution, where your ground plane is very close to your signal layer. The bottom two pictures represent the two layer solution, where your ground plane is very far away. So this is basically looking at that coaxial cable from the side. The coaxial cable would come in here. The ground will be connected here using vias here and the signal would be connected here to the top layer. So the current would go here, follow the via and go back. And this is a tiny loop surface. If we do the same thing here, the current would go up here, go all the way down eight times further and return. So this loop has far more surface area. So this means this loop is an excellent antenna and this loop is a far worse antenna. If we look at the pictures on the right, we see a cross section 90 degrees rotated. And here we see the traces and here we see the ground plane. I've omitted this part below so I can make this picture bigger. Now, this, this, elect this magnetic field that is uh, being created by this loop uh, can hardly get through this gap. So it's, it's, it's mostly being stopped here. In a two layer, the magnetic field is hardly stopped. I mean, there's a huge gaping hole here and it can simply transmit over to the other side and induce a voltage or a current in this loop. So current loops cause crosstalk and I would call that inductive crosstalk because you're basically creating two inductors that are talking to each other. Now voltages also cause crosstalk and I call that capacitive crosstalk. Now, how does that work in this case? This conductor has a capacitance to ground and a capacitance towards the other signal wire. And the same is true for the two layer situation. The big difference is, is that the capacitance to ground 
in the four-layer case is much higher than in the two-layer case. And probably the capacitance between those signal wires is, is lower in the four-layer case because there's far less surface area available for the electric field lines to move through than in the two-layer case where there's a lot of space for electrical field lines to move. So what does it mean? The current has a choice. It either can go here or it can go there to the other side. And of course, it can go to the shield, which helps a lot as well. If this capacitance to ground is much larger, the current will be much more likely to go there than to go here. So here you basically see that if you bring the ground plane closer, you will attack the problem from all directions. You are, you'll first make the loops much smaller and you'll make the capacitance, capacitance to ground much larger, which basically ultimately means there will be much less crosstalk from this trace to that trace. Of course, another really, really simple way to improve the situation is simply to move these traces further apart and thereby reducing the mutual capacitance between them. Let's summarize the conclusions. First type of crosstalk, capacitive crosstalk. The closer two pieces of copper are, the bigger the capacitance between them, the more crosstalk you'll get. Bringing the ground plane closer to these two pieces of copper will increase the capacitance to the ground plane, so less current wants to go to the other piece of copper, which means you get less crosstalk. So you can play with the distance between the pieces of copper, putting them further apart, and or the distance to the ground plane to improve crosstalk. Either one of those will help, and doing both at the same time will really help. Let's look at the second type of crosstalk, inductive crosstalk. This is caused by current loops. Now, if the loop is bigger, it's a better antenna and will transmit a stronger signal. Reducing the distance to the ground plane reduces the loop size, thereby reducing the crosstalk. Increasing the distance between two current loops will decrease crosstalk between them, since the antennas will be further apart. So you can play with the distance between the two current loops and or the distance to the ground plane to improve things. If you do both at the same time, you'll get a very big improvement. So what is a two-layer solution? Well, in a two-layer, we cannot bring the ground plane closer. We, we could choose to go for a 0.8 millimeter board, uh, but I don't really like these because they're really flimsy. They really bend quickly. So I'm always worried about SMT components breaking. So let's assume we don't want to do that. Um, then we have to increase the distance between the parts. Of course, I'll need to prove this for real with an actual measurement and an actual board. So that means I will need another test board. I have a whole list of other ideas to try and improve the layout on a two-layer design um, by not increasing the size. And uh, it'll be very interesting to try that. And maybe some of you will come up with some ideas to improve that design as well in the comments. Uh, maybe you have a great idea that I haven't thought of. I can include it in the board. So yeah, this would be a nice time to buy shares of PCB companies. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm a little bit blown away by the incredible positive comments on my previous videos. So um, yeah, thanks a lot for that and um, see you next time.